This video will demonstrate how to analyze the results of the Taylor Harris dispersion simulation to test if it is uh, consistent with the theory. So the first thing we need to do is uh, go to the out file and collect the data or the simulation results that are contained in the sigma btc file. So as you can see, this is just a file that contains values of time step in one vector here, and then the different types of breakthrough curves, BTC01, BTC02, BTC03, BTC velocity, which is a constant, the concentration gradient. and the concentration times the velocity. And finally the flux concentration here. So I think what I will do for simplicity is just take this and in fact I guess I'll plot it in or paste it into Excel. And then I'll go back and collect the uh, time data. Uh, but I believe we should only have to start at 3000. Or no, I'm sorry. Uh, this is already adjusted to start. The 3000 has already been subtracted, basically. Just verify that this is the correct data. And this looks perfect. So now I'd like to use a program called uh, STANMOD, which stands for the Studio of Analytical Models. It's available from the University of California Riverside, the Agricultural Research Service. It's uh, free and it's uh, useful for fitting the CDE. So we'll use the CXT fit code. We can use next here. None of this is really relevant, but we will be doing an inverse problem because we need to estimate the dispersion coefficient. We'll use the deterministic equilibrium convection dispersion equation. Uh, time and position can be dimensional. And the units are really uh, kind of irrelevant as long as we stay dimensionally consistent. We use flux average concentration, although in this case that we are working on right now, the resident and the flux are virtually identical. We won't use any constraints, and we will not estimate the total mass. We need some initial guesses here. And if we just look back to our simulation, uh, it looks like the velocity was about 0 
And for the moment, let's fit both parameters, uh, velocity and dispersion coefficient. And as a starting guess for the dispersion, I'll just use the, uh, the value from the uh, of the diffusion coefficient, which is like 3 times 10 to the minus 3. And that is based, of course, on the tau 1 value in the params that in file. So we will work with a uh, step input. The input concentration will be 1. And we have a zero initial condition throughout the channel. And we have no production or decay. And we will use data as T and C for fixed depth. In this case, that would be at our 100 lattice units. And that would need to be put right here. And I do not recall the number of data points. Perhaps. Uh, Uh, 70. Now let's hope that we can paste the data from Excel. There may be a problem with some of these negative numbers. I suspect they're there will be. Okay. And I think that we can probably skip this or well let's finish it. So we can this will just be output from the fitted model. Uh, we'll have this output at one hundred lattice units at a single location. We'll take 100 output times. We'll have them at steps of 10. Uh, actually, we need to go to about 7,000. So, about 700. Oh no, I'm sorry. Uh, Pick 70 and 100. And the initial time can be zero, maybe. And you can see the fitted blue line compared to the data input here is not perfect, uh, but it's fairly good throughout most of the, the model domain. The fact is, the this is almost approaching a uh, not really a dispersive problem. So now we can see what our fitting results have been. And so we fitted two parameters. And our file results are shown here. So the D is 0.322, and the velocity has only changed slightly from our initial estimate here. So we'll consider that close enough. So 0.322.